Hi all, here's a quick how-to video that uh, I picked up on from another application trying to demonstrate how to create the shape you see on screen right now. And to be honest, it was a very complex process that they used to almost get there, but some of the features such as this return and these self-tapping screw returns, they couldn't actually do. So as far as NX sheet metal is concerned, I'm going to take you through the steps of how I got to here from, from the start right the way through the process. So I started out with just a basic sketch and extrude and a chamfer to give me my basic shape. So it started in modeling or using the extrude commands within sheet metal. I then generated a sketch of the hole positions or most of the hole positions on the top face, which uh, I'll come to use later. And then we use the sheet metal from solid. So sheet metal from solid command really selects the web faces. Now preview is not always exact, but I selected the faces of the solid body and then selected the relevant bend, bend edges. And some of you may know sheet metal from solid. If you select a bend edge, you can change its parameters individually throughout the part. But I've no need to do this. And stepping back to the very start, which I did miss, is the material thickness and bend radius is defined for the sheet metal from solid to pick up on those defaults. So we then had a couple of flanges across the bottom. I created these simply by selecting the edge, but I used a match face. So it matched the datum plane at the bottom to define the angle and position. So you've probably noticed now, and the flange on the other side, that to get to this point, I haven't had to work out any angles or put any dimensions or change any profiles. It's just selecting based on the references I had. And then I continued the process. I used that original sketch to generate normal cutout for the, for the holes. And this particular design is a bracket for mounting a fan. So this was the, the clearance for the central boss and the uh, fixing holes. And then I created a sketch, which is just a point. And this is the problem the other system actually had is creating the form here. Uh, let me just hide off that extrude. And I use a lightning cutout command where we can depress. You can use, uh, if you don't have advanced sheet metal, you can use drawn cutout here as well. But lightning cutout, if you have advanced sheet metal, is the best option because it gives you the whole cutout size in the flat pattern. I then went around to tidy up the corners. Um, there's no requirement of this product to have the corners completely closed. So I did this with a open circular profile, which is a really good stress reliever for those corners. And you'll probably notice I did all four in one feature. So quite simple there. I then created the flat pattern as a check. So we can go and have a look at that. And we can see that we've got the basic flat pattern. And this is the lightning cutout information I was referring to is divided into the whole cutout, the whole diameter and the cutout diameter and also the bend information. Now what you'll probably notice is this flat pattern is halfway through and that's because I had to fix a current timestamp enabled. I'm just going to Rebuild the entire part. I'll come back to this point in after the closed corner in a second. I'm going to drop that to the end and I'm going to turn off fix a current timestamp. So any new features will come in before it. So anyway, back to the closed corner. I then created another sketch, which you'll see on the bottom of this flange. Now for something like this, thin sheet metal, self-tapping screws are used and the material is deformed. Here I do use a drawn cutout as opposed to the lightning cutout. Again, both in relatively interchangeable, just the result on the flat pattern is different. And this gives me the profile and parameters I need to 
uh, used with the self self tapping screw. I mirror the feature across to the other side. I mirror both features across to the other flange. I then create a sketch on the center line, which I can use either one way or the other. I'm using it to this other side, and this is just an outlet for a cable. Again, I'm not sketching on this face. So if any of the original parameters change or gets removed, this feature is robust because it's using datum planes to define it. And then I go around and do a break corner on all of the edges. We take all of the sharp corners away here and here and on the outside edge and then back to my flat pattern. And if we take a look at the flat pattern, I'm going to do a new window, show the flat pattern, and we can look at the finished result both in 3D and in the 2D flat pattern. So in my mind, a fairly simple thing to do, even though there's some complex angles, using the extrude and the chamfer to drive the product. If I go back into this chamfer, for example, and I want to change some of the parameters or the angle here. If I want to change this angle, say down to a distance of 16 and OK. And the part updates accordingly. If I generated this with different angles, that would have been a very, very difficult and time consuming modification to do. So the power and simplicity of NX sheet metal right there on the on the tool